Hey everyone, it's Selena here. Alright, so I know I've been promising you guys this video for, I don't even know, it's been a long time. Um, so I know that everybody is pretty anxious to see this. This is a tutorial on how to do stickers in Design Space. And the examples that I'm going to be using are images from the Lettering Delights website. If you've never heard of them or if you are familiar for, with them, they have awesome graphics, they have awesome cut files, they always have awesome sales and coupons, discount codes, and free bundles with the purchase of like $7. Or, I mean, they always have something going on, so I would check out their stuff. They even have free stuff um, without the purchase of anything, so check them out. They have really cute graphics. I love using them for stickers, and um, so that's what I'm going to be using, and I have, I'll have linked in the description box their website and um, any codes or anything that is um, currently going on. So in this example I'm going to be doing some Halloween stickers and you can do the same thing with Cricut images in Design Space because a lot of the Cricut images that are included usually have a shadow layer. Me personally when I create stickers I like to have that white outline around it just so that it looks like a sticker. You might want to do it without it, but this video is going to be showing you how to do it with the outline. So any of the images that you use outside of Design Space may not have an outline, and so I'm going to show you how to create that outline, and you'll be using Inkscape for that. And I'll also show you, um, we'll go ahead and insert an image here using Design space images from like a kick, cricket cartridge. So let's do this cute fox here. So when you insert this fox, it does not have an outline, but if you look at the, the layers panel, you will see that there is an outline included. So you can unhide that and then you can create, um, you can change it to white if you want to. And just know that when you insert an image, um, from Design Space, it's going to be defaulted to cut, so you'll just need to flatten these so that they can print and then cut around it. So there's one for um, Design Space image. Okay, but all these other ones here are from the Lettering Delights website, and I will show you how to do that. So if I go to, let's go to Inkscape. take that out of there. Okay, so in Inkscape, and I would write notes because there's several steps to take in order to create this white outline and um, save it within your image. So I'm going to pull in under File. Under File, I'm going to select Import. So I'm going to choose a clip art. Okay, so this is from the Sugar Monster collection. And let's choose this little girl and the monster. Okay, it's going to pull in pretty big. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller here. Alright, so this is a file. No outline. You can Bring it into Design Space like that if you want it, but this is, like I said, how to do it with an outline. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Path, and I'm going to trace this bitmap. What I'm trying to do is create a, a shadow layer. If you've seen any of my other videos on how to create a shadow layer for like a monogram or um, other images, it's basically the same thing but we're saving it a little bit different. We're saving it, we're not saving it like an SVG, we're going to save it like a PNG. So I'm going to select the file and I'm just going to up it to about 65 because I want the entire image black. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see that not everything got selected. Everything is not black. So let's delete that one and let's try it again. Let's up it to 85. And the reason why it's doing that is some of the colors are too light for it to pick up. 
So you just have to raise that threshold. All right, so it didn't pick up the teeth. That's okay, because we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to get it. So at least the majority, the, the entire outline is, is pretty much selected. So I'm gonna go up to path, and I'm gonna break apart. And now I have the entire black area. So just delete anything else, all the other bits and pieces. So there's our um, back layer, okay? But I'm gonna change the color to blue, just so that I can see it a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the image, or the image is selected, I'm gonna hit the end, E-N-D key on my keyboard, and I'm gonna send it to the back, okay? So it's behind this other image, but there's no um, outline there. We're going to try and get this to be an offset image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the control key down, and I'm also going to hold down the closed parentheses on my keyboard, which is on the zero key. And I'm just going to hit that a couple of times. So this is a shortcut on how to do an offset image. Another way to do it is by going up to path, and selecting outset and you would just have to do that several times so this is showing you the shortcut which is control plus the close parentheses on how to do that okay so now I'm going to bring that over and you can see now the outline around the image um, depending on your liking you can make it a little bit thicker or leave it thinner however you like it and I like it about there now I'm not going to leave it as is because I don't want a blue background I just needed it to be blue or a different color so that I can see where it is. Okay, if you want to be perfect with it, you can select both images and go down to, I'm going to close this out here so you can see it. We're going to do align and distribute. And you probably cannot see that because I'm outside of my recording parameter. Let's see. Okay, align and distribute. All right, so I'm going to center it on the vertical axis and center it on the horizontal axis. So now it's perfectly aligned. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose the outside image. Don't select the inside. Make sure you can scroll in closer to see, but make sure you have the outside um, back layer selected and I'm going to choose the white one so it's not it didn't go away it's just white so it's blending in with the background so now I'm going to select the two again you can see there's two squares so I have them both selected I'm going to go up to file file export bitmap we're going to select export bitmap don't do anything here. We're just going to choose the area or the file folder or location that you want to save it. All right, so I have a folder which is called Lettering Delights. And let's just name it Sugar Monster, oops, Monster Sticker 4. Okay, we're going to hit Save, and we're not done yet because it's not saved yet until you hit export. Once you hit export, you're done. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize this. Let's go back to design space and let's go pull that image in. So I'm gonna go upload image. I'm gonna browse that folder. Lettering Delights, that's the Sugar Monster Sticker 4. And you can see that there's that white outline and there is no background. It's, we saved it as a PNG. I'm just going to choose complex image because I always choose that when I am printing. Continue. And this is already defaulted to save as print and cut because I don't need it to save like that. Continue. And there it is. We're going to insert that into our map. And there it is. We have that nice white outline. All right, so all of these are set to print. So these are going to print and then cut. Now, I like my stickers. You know, it just depends on what you're using them for. 
but I like my stickers about a little over an inch and a half or so in width, um, but basically an inch and a half in height. So let's change that to an inch and a half. And you can make it bigger however you want, but this is what I do. Okay, so depending on the browser that you're using is based on how big you can print on your print area. So right now I am showing you on Chrome, and I believe it's eight by five and a half. I, I could be mistaken, but what I did was I, I set a canvas and I just chose basic shapes or basic canvas and then I go up to the canvas part and I selected you know what let's oh I don't even know if it's gonna undo it. it's not gonna undo it can I even remember what I had it set at let's do five and a half by eight I think that's what it is. Let me double. Okay. Five and a half by eight. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I had, that's what I had it at. So I just use this area in order to see how many I can fit. So let's say I wanted a couple more of these and I would duplicate those and just add them on here. Once you have everything that you want added in there within the the size, you know, once you have all of this filled in or however you many, I would select everything and either attach or flatten them all together. Let's actually add some more so that you can see. So let's duplicate this one and this one. Okay, now I'm going to select all of them and flatten and go. Okay, so now you can see that all of those fit on one page. So just be sure that, you know, you have everything kind of organized so that you don't waste too much sticker paper. Um, I know I get asked what type of sticker paper I use. My printer that I use, it's an HP Envy. It does not feed the Cricut paper in. It jams. So I have used Avery sticker paper, Avery full sheet labels, and also just a generic um, full sheet shipping label. And they all work great, and I love them. And I'll have those linked down below. You can get a box of 25 for like under ten dollars you can get a box of a hundred for the generic brand for like eleven or twelve dollars I mean it's pretty crazy on um, you know the alternatives you don't have to have specific sticker paper as long as it's like a, a, a full sheet label that can print and then um, the setting that I use to get a kiss cut which will just cut the sticker part and won't cut through the backing is the 3M post-it um, setting so I will also have that information down below so that you can um, use that setting and see if that works for you if you use the Avery sticker paper or the other paper that I have linked so that's how I make my stickers um, like I said there's several steps to take in Inkscape but it's pretty easy just rewind and listen to it again or take some notes and post um, on my Facebook page post some pictures of the stickers that you make and let me know how 
they came out. Alright, so I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.